How's it going guys and welcome back to Drop Clutch Garage. Uh, just got a few loose ends to button up today on the 65 Coupe and then a few organizational things I wanted to share with you. All right guys, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mod to this tool cart, storage cart, service cart, whatever you wanna call it that I purchased. As you can see, um, there's not really a great place to put any of these DeWalt's. So I have this uh, C-channel left over. This was um, a frame rail repair panel. And I'm gonna cut it in about one inch strips. And then I'm going to, I believe, spot weld it on the side of this guy. So that way I could hang these up just like that. I'll do one here, one here, and then one on that second shelf. And that should be everything. So I think that'll help uh, just clean up the top area and leave more room for other tools. Uh, so let's go ahead and knock that out. Alrighty guys, I went ahead and cut out these one inch strips. I divert all the edges and um, rounded off the corners as well. Uh, last thing you want is to be putting away a tool and get stabbed. <laughs> so I went ahead and rounded off all the corners. I'm gonna drill two holes through them and then that's what we'll use to spot weld it onto the cart. Alrighty guys, this is what I came up with. Uh, got all four of them spot welded on. There's two spot welds right there. I think next time I'm out, I'll go ahead and pick up some red paint, uh, give them a coat to match the uh, rest of the cart. Really happy with how this turned out. I'm gonna open up some more space on the top of the cart for other tools and keep these guys organized in their one spot. Uh, so I went ahead and picked up this cart over at Harbor Freight. Uh, it was like $36, $40, something like that, fairly cheap. Uh, just something to keep um, parts waiting to go on the cart a bit more organized. And then tools for the top, because um, right now I have another garage which I keep my toolbox on. So I'm gonna utilize this as just like a quick and easy grab a tool uh, cart for the top shelf, just like the essentials. Um, picked up one of these magnetic socket organizers. I've had these strips for a long time. They're just not cutting it anymore. Um, some of the holders don't hold on the socket anymore. And I'm thinking with the magnetic one, it's gonna be a bit more easy to keep it organized. So I got this tray off of Amazon. Uh, it's three inch drive. The top's supposed to be for deep sockets and the bottom for regular. And uh, I'll go ahead and throw the link in the description below from Amazon. I'll let you know how it works out. And if it works out well and I enjoy it, I'll go ahead and get one for a half inch drive and quarter inch drive as well. So let's go ahead and get this set up on the cart. So I got some of the sockets here in the new strip. Um, it's pretty awesome. You could even put this thing upside down and they don't fall out. So I'm definitely gonna order the rest of these as well as some of the sockets that I'm missing. Yeah, that's not cool. So I'm gonna have to go find the rest of those, or if I can't find them, I'll go ahead and put an order in so that way I have a complete set. And then I'm gonna get some of the metric trays as well, because um, it also fits in my toolbox. And I love these. So you can even stick this on the other side of your car while you're working, <laughs> but uh, good find. All right guys, now that I finished undercoating the other side of the car, um, go ahead and install the axle vent tube. Uh, take all the masking off. I'll also go ahead and attach um, the rubber brake line hose to the bracket. I had to relocate for the dual exhaust. Um, I'll remove the old one for single exhaust and then touch up that paint or undercoating as well. And then I'll be able to run the, the solid brake line from front to, or from back all the way up to front, as well as the fuel line. Uh, I'll run the fuel filter. I have to make a bracket for that as well. Um, so let's go ahead and get that knocked out. That's not going anywhere. Alrighty guys, I have the uh, vent tube completely installed, uh, as well as the rubber hose is snapped into the, the bracket there. I installed the muffler brackets, as well as the reinforcement plates on the inside of the vehicle. Because this was originally a single exhaust car, it did not have those reinforcement plates, uh, but now they are installed, as well as the muffler brackets. Uh, so now I can complete the exhaust. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and run the fuel and brake line. Alrighty guys, I went ahead and ran both fuel and brake lines from back to front. Just like that. And now I'm 
working on uh, the fuel filter installation. Uh, I went ahead and picked up this fuel filter from Earl's. There it is. Uh, I got a rubber insulator around it and then just use a steel clamp, put a little hole in the floor there. And then I'm gonna run a rubber hose from the outlet right here and then reconnect it here to here to send it to the front of the car. So I'll show you in just a second when that's all complete. Alrighty guys, this is what I came up with. Uh, let's see if I can get a better angle here. That's pretty good. So I got it coming out of the tank to the inside of the fuel filter, coming out to the hard line. I went ahead and threw the zip tie in here uh, just to make sure the rubber doesn't rub on this hose clamp here. And if we look here, it's not, the hoses aren't rubbing on anything else. So that should not be an issue. Uh, no kinks in any of the bends either. It should work out pretty well. Alrighty guys, I also finished up um, all the front brake lines. If we take a look over here, got hose from brake line, got the rubber bushing in there. Coming inside uh, with the clips. And then this is where things got interesting. Um, as you guys may have seen in a previous video, I went with a power disc brake conversion um, and the kit included this combination valve, uh, which is very different from the original proportioning valve, which mounts on the inner fender apron on this side of the master cylinder. So this is set up to run underneath the master cylinder. So I had to tweak the lines quite a bit to get them all to fit properly. Two front brake lines go here and coming over to the other side. You can see it right there. And then the brake line coming from the rear of the vehicle, you can see it come up there and in the back of the combination valve. I'm gonna have to get a couple of J clips and secure them to the frame right down there just to make it a cleaner installation and also make sure that line stays away from the exhaust because uh, you don't want that brake fluid heating up. And then I also had to modify the bracket that the combination belt came with. Uh, you can see I had to slice it, dice it, and weld it. <laughs> the one that they supplied was basically this. However, it didn't allow enough clearance to fit this adapter in the combination valve as well as uh, the line for the rear brake line. The bend would have been way too much. It would have kinked the line for sure. So I have the combination valve on a little bit of a pitch. In order to achieve that, I had to bend this bracket and then cut it and then weld on the access on the side here to capture this uh, bolt hole right there. And that's pretty much buttoned up. I mean, the only thing I have to do is get a vacuum hose. So I'm ready now to fill it with fluid and bleed them. All right, guys, with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right there. Please let me know in the comment section what you think about this video. It's more of a vlog style video than a large project. So it, it showcases more of the details of the build. Uh, so drop a comment if you'd like to see more vlog style videos like this. Uh, I enjoyed making it. These little details are definitely satisfying to complete. The next big video coming out is gonna be the wiring of the Holly EFI, plumbing of it, and firing up the engine. So guys, we're getting real close to getting this thing on the ground, running and driving. I'm very excited to share it all with you. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing and liking and sharing, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.